Welcome to the Vault Podcast and Reviews, where music still matters. You can check out everything we're doing at facebook.com slash the vault RVWS, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash the vault reviews. We're on Stitcher at the vault music one for Twitter at the vault reviews on Instagram and send us anything you feel like sending us the vault music one at gmail.com. Hello, everyone listening. We're back with another review. Robbie's with us today. Robbie, how's it going? Oh, pretty good, man. How you doing? Good. Uh, this is going to be your first review, so I'm interested to see what you bring to the table. Everybody's got different flavor when they talk reviews. so Right. Um, yeah, this will definitely be the first album review I've ever done, so we'll see kind of how it goes. <laughs> if it sucks, you're fired. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm not getting paid anyway, so... <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, today uh, we're going to do the latest from Demi Lovato, Confident. Uh, it's a late 2015 release, but before we get too far into it, I want to remind you, you can listen to us on Stitcher, YouTube, Podomatic. Find us all over social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You know, support us there, like, share, all that good stuff. Uh, subscribe. Also, if you want to support us monetarily, go to the Facebook page, and there's a little Shop Now tab you can click on. Uh, any donations, three dollars or more, gives you free st- or gives you stickers. And if you donate ten dollars or more, we'll send you a shirt. Uh, we're running low on some of those, but whatever we got left, we're gonna send them to you. So let's get on to the review, Robbie. I'll let you kick things off with just kind of an overview of Demi Lovato and in your thoughts. Uh, well, I mean, you know, like I said, it's not really uh, not really necessarily my style as, as far as music goes. She's, you know, to me at first, it's like just another pop singer is kind of how mm-hmm. I looked at it until we started getting into it and listening to the album. Yeah, I mean, you know, she's definitely uh, easy on the eyes. <laughs> you know, she's <laughs> she's good looking. She's she fits the pop star pop star look and attitude and everything. Uh, and I was actually pleasantly surprised with this album. Uh, you know, is is it was pretty good. You know, as far as what I was expecting it to be, anyway. You know. And that's a great point you bring up that I wish more people would realize no matter what style it is. And you could take this into even like movies, any kind of entertainment, like don't judge it by its cover until you check it out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And this album is definite proof of that. You know, I was interested to check it out because I heard cool, cool for the summer. And I was like one, that was one of the rare songs I heard on mainstream radio that I was like, ah, I kind of dig this. Right. And catchy. uh, yeah, exactly. It was super catchy. <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, I wonder if the rest of the album's like that. So uh, we're going to jump into that. Um, yeah. The thing that really got me is the vocal hooks and melodies carry this entire album. Like, yeah. if, if it's not for her, the, this album is really nothing. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I even heard her speak on it, too, talking about how, you know, she most of her other albums she shot for uh, just hit singles. You know, that's pretty, basically what she wanted. And uh, when she came out with this album, she was basically trying to go back to her roots and do an album for herself and her fans. And, you know, you can kind of pull that out of a lot of the songs, too, you know, because you have the couple of real poppy songs that you hear on the radio. And then, uh, you know, you have a few songs that really express her as an artist, which was pleasantly surprising, you know, the, to hear those songs on that album. So From a pop artist, yeah. Usually they're just talking about whatever was written for them. Yeah, exactly. And it sounds to me like it, at least a handful of these songs, she definitely played a big hand in writing them herself uh, as far as the lyrics go you know of course she probably didn't make the music itself but uh but i i think she definitely had a hand in writing the lyrics which is nice for a pop artist you know that probably doesn't happen too often nowadays right one thing i wanted to touch on the voice you know i was talking about how good it sounded and uh i think you maybe dispelled this a little bit but with all these pop artists you know you wonder how much quote studio magic is going on uh, when you hear these vocals of how just perfectly clean and how perfectly on time there are others you know they're flawless and then a lot of times you see those artists do the same thing live and they can't do it but uh i'll let you tell everybody real quick about what you found to prove that wrong oh yeah um spotify does these uh spotify session uh albums and basically this was a, a live version of this confident album that she recorded in new york at, at spotify whatever whatever that is but um i it sounded to me like she was in a, a small bar real close uh close counters with the uh with the audience um and it was awesome honestly like i liked it better than just the regular album hearing it live because it was kind of like an acoustic version where you know she had like the live you know drums and like an acoustic guitar and everything behind her so it kind of cut some of the poppiness out of it uh, and then you actually get to hear her sing um outside of it without like any auto-tune or uh pitch correction or any of that on there so 
uh, she definitely nailed it. I mean, she was on point uh, with her singing, and it was it, it was pretty awesome, honestly. So let's jump into the music. Uh, I thought it was a good mix of styles. Um, I've got mm-hmm. like uh, "Waiting for You," "Old Ways," and "Kingdom Come." They they kind of had a slight hip hop rap feel to it. Uh, the, yeah. beats in, the beats, anyway. Um, and then you had like confident, cool for the summer, catchy pop music. And then yep. you had Stone Cold and Father, which are kind of have a slower, darker feel to it. That's just some things that I noticed while I was listening to it. What did you think? I honestly, I, I felt out about the same thing. That Kingdom Come song, like I, I wrote down first of all, you know, you have your epic dance songs that, that mm-hmm. she has on there that just make you want to want to rage, really. And then, uh, but they're not annoying, unlike a lot of the yeah. other dance songs. Exactly, exactly. And then Kingdom Come came on, and it's like you know, it's kind of poppy at first, but then like that beat drops in, and I mean, it's. The beats on this album were, were dope uh, pretty much all the way around. And I really have this kind of like hatred for Iggy Azalea. I loved her when she first came out, but she's on that Kingdom Come song. Mm-hmm. And even she came pretty correct as far as like her lyrics and her flow and stuff. I mean, she was pretty good on that song. I thought it was funny that Iggy Azalea even made, she made like a, a Blues Clues reference, uh, you know, a couple just like really <laughs> off the wall references on it. But like I said, uh, I mean, she was on the album with Demi Lovato, so maybe she was like, Demi was like, hey, you got to bring your A game, step it up from where you've, where you've been in the past, you know, year or so. Um, but yeah, overall, it was it was real good. You bring up uh, Stone Cold and Father, and those were actually the two songs that were my favorites um, on the album because they kind of stepped out of the, you know, like the, the dance songs and mm-hmm. they were more like expressing her as an artist and you could pick out her actual singing in it. Uh, and it wasn't just like overcome with... Uh, you know, electronic beats and, and right. stuff like that, you know, is or just repeating the same thing over and over again. Yeah, exactly. And that father song was, was actually the lyrics in it were real, you know I mean? You could tell that she definitely wrote that song. It sounded like it was about her dad leaving when she was young. And, uh, you know, so I mean, it was, it was, an, you don't hear very many pop artists do that, you know, talk about like real shit, real you know, stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. That comes from the heart, you know? So it's, it's, it's refreshing to hear that, and, uh, especially out of a, a, a real popular artist like herself. So let's talk about the negatives. What do you got negative about it? Waiting on You and Wildfire were really the only two songs that stood out to me on the album that I didn't care for, like, really at all. You know, because, like, the rest of the album I liked a lot, but those two songs came on, and I was just, I don't know, they just hit me hit me wrong, I guess. Um, I mean, those are really the only two negatives that I have about the entire album uh, were those two songs off it. Out of 11, two songs aren't, aren't too, that's not too bad. <laughs> you know? the only thing i have is like you know the, the album starts off kind of with a bang with confident mm-hmm. uh, you know it's a, it's a pretty pretty uh hit song so to speak to kick off an album and for yeah. me about halfway through it just it starts kind of tapering off like i don't it just kind yeah. of loses energy um the the vocal hooks aren't as catchy at the, like they were at the beginning of the album and you know there's a couple of songs i didn't like but I wouldn't say that I hated them, if that makes sense. Right, right, absolutely. And I, I feel pretty much the same way about like halfway through it. You know, it's kind of like, I, it's not that I was getting sick of listening to it, but maybe just like I don't, I don't even know how to put it. Like it was just kind of getting repetitive a little bit. And then, then she comes out with father at the very end. At the end, uh, yeah. You know, and so that kind of brought it back around uh, for me anyway. Because like I said, that was probably my favorite song on the album, just because it was so real. You know. So you just mentioned that as your favorite. I still got to go with Cool for the Summer, and it's very rare that I pick a, you know, the single off of an album as my favorite song. I mean, yep. that rarely happens, but right. you know, to this day, I'm like, I, I'm still when I hear it, I don't like skip over it or anything. I still jam out to it. So yeah, um, and it's it, one, of, go ahead. one of those songs where if you catch me by myself listening to it, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna be getting down pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just uh, we need to honest. do like a we need to do like a video show of just that. Uh, oh, me getting down to cool for yeah, the summer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that should be fairly interesting. <laughs> All right, so before we get into kind of our final verdict and uh, the Vault Star ratings that we always give these albums, anything else you want to touch on? Uh, no, not really. Like I said, I was just I was pretty surprised with it. Uh, you know, there was only two songs I didn't really care for too much out of the whole album. Uh, other than that, overall, it was it was fairly good. So. Yeah, great overall vocals and super catchy. Uh, that's a uh, you know theme that keeps running through this album for me mm-hmm. and that, that's what that's what hooks it because there's a lot of the music in here that i don't care for uh right. some of it i it, i actually like again cool for the summer it's it's nothing reinventing the wheel as far as like kind of the dance beat goes or anything but uh, nah. the vocals and you know the, the way that the song is written with the catchy choruses and everything that's what grabs me so 
Um, other than that, you know, it, like I said, about halfway through, it starts kind of falling off, but not terrible. Um, so on the Vault Star rating system, one star being the worst, five stars being the best. What do you give this? Oh man, I give it a, I give it probably a three. That's exactly what I have, and the reason <laughs> being is because half the album totally rules, and the other half is just kind of meh. So, you know, a three star is just about perfect for this, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe I kind of got to myself on it by listening to that live version of the album afterwards because it was, in my opinion, it was, it was just so much better hearing it live um, because, like I said, it kind of cut some of the poppiness out of it. So if you get a chance, check it out on YouTube if you don't have Spotify. Uh, the live version is, is I would, you know, give it a little bit better of a rating. But Yeah, so there you go. Demi Lovato, Confident, uh, 2015 release, late 2015. Check it out. I think it's worth pretty much anybody checking out. I mean, I know there's going mm-hmm. to be some people that just really don't like this kind of pop music, but I think it's a little bit different enough for you to check out. Um, at least, mm-hmm. you know, if you if you don't like the full album, I, I usually don't condone this, but, you know, at least check out a couple of the songs on iTunes or Spotify, YouTube, however you got to do it. Uh, right. You may end up wanting to check out the whole album, but, um, you know, at least at least give it a shot. So anything else? No, completely agree. Give it a shot. It's It's worth a listen, at least. All right, guys, once again, you can listen to us. YouTube, Podomatic, Stitcher, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Send us an email with anything you want, requests on any kind of reviews you want or comments, anything like that. And once again, you can support us monetarily. You can donate any amount of money you want at Facebook. You can check out the link that says Shop Now. Click on it. Donate whatever. We got stickers and T-shirts to give away for that. So until next time, see you later. Have a good one.